Hi, thank you for coming tonight. Um, we have the Alpha Pepper String Band with Andy, Lavo, Roger, and Brent. I'd just like to remind you that when you're sitting in your seats, feel free to take off your mask. But if you get up for any reason, please put it on. But then when you come back, you're good. And enjoy. So we have a number of uh, instrumental musical selections and five different people who are going to be coming up and speaking, doing short readings. It's really amazing to see everyone here. What a treat. And we're going to kick it off with a couple of fiddle tunes. <laughs> Blacksmith, the Temperance Reel, and then one which is not an Irish tune, Big Coyote. 
and Roger's, as always, going to remind you how they start. over to his octave mandolin, which is, if you're unfamiliar with an octave mandolin, you can kind of guess what the story is with it just by looking at it. It's a big mandolin. <laughs> it's tuned, as the name implies, an octave lower so play, than... Play, play an E string. An octave. He's an octave lower. <laughs> or at least approximately an octave lower. <laughs> we're going to do the first, there are a couple of tunes in our set that were composed by an Irish composer named Turlock O'Carolan uh, a long time ago. And uh, he was, he was known as a, he was a blind uh, traveling 
musician. Uh, he would basically compose odes to whoever was going to make him breakfast, or, or know, give him whiskey, or give him whiskey, depending on the time of day, or maybe not depending on the time of day. And this is a time when perhaps uh, this is a, a, a song called. I'll let you, you guys, with as much information as you now have, you can make up the rest of the story about how this was composed. It's called O'Carolan's Quarrel with His Landlady. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Ashley Barrow, who's going to do some reading, give us, uh, going to, going to read for us. That's, that's how it's said. with Spoon River Anthology. It appeared in 1915. The first notion of the Spoon River poems probably came to Masters through William Marion Reddy, an editor who gave him a copy of the Greek Anthology and suggested a series of epitaphs. There's 244 of these in this book. I'm not going to read them all, <laughs> I promise. Um, but basically, they're about uh, 244 residents of Spoon River, which is an actual place where he grew up. And they are from their gravestones. So these are dead people. <laughs> um, in the, it also can be done as a play. Um, and they're basically giving you the information that they've learned from life after death. So my favorite one is from a lady named Faith. Matheny. At first, you will not know what they mean, and you may never know. 
and we may never tell you. These sudden flashes in your soul, like lambent lightning on snowy clouds at midnight when the moon is full. They come in solitude, or perhaps you sit with your friend and all at once a silence falls on speech and his eyes, without a flicker, glow at you. You too have seen the secret together. He sees it in you and you in him. And there you sit, thrilling, lest the mystery stand before you and strike you dead with a splendor like the sun's. <laughs> Be brave, all souls who have such visions, as your body's alive, as mine is dead. You're catching a little whiff of the ether reserved for God himself. Thanks. Yeah. So we're going to play now a waltz, Midnight on the Water, one of my favorite waltzes. that are paired together oftentimes. We played them a lot for dances, for um, 
The first one's called Green Mountain Petronella, and the second one is, I'm not sure what, the Huntsman's the Forest. Huntsman's Forest. But the Green Mountain Petronella, we had oftentimes had a hard time getting started with this because we couldn't remember how it starts. Now the joke is around here that all the fiddle tunes sound the same, <laughs> which isn't exactly true. But so in order to um, be able to get this one started, we're having particular problems with this. Um, uh, so I made a, a little song up in my head so that I could remember it. It totally works, too. It totally works. And then now Andy has it, but it goes something like this. I got up this morning at half past dawn. The cows are grazing on the neighbor's lawn. Now why is my neighbor all mad at me? My cows, they great, they mowed his lawn for free. <laughs> and with that, Andy can get it started. beginnings, the, the, the little ways of remembering the tunes is that now I almost always just kind of crack up at the beginning of Green Mountain Petronella. <laughs> That's not really a bad problem to have, you know? It's not like we're playing that at a lot of funerals. It's like a pretty joyful occasion anyway. So you, you can stay pretty safe. Yeah. So we're going to now play a trio of uh, some hymns or, yeah, gospel music. But hopefully you'll recognize all three. I thought about bringing a prize for whoever recognized all three, but I didn't do that. So just pat yourself on the back if you do. And uh, can I just hear a D chord? <laughs> Thank you. 
So now we're going to have a reading from Erin. And while she's coming up here, I'll fly away. Right? Number two was... Number two was... Now I have to look. What was number two? Uh, just over. Just over in the glory land. All these tunes sound the same. <laughs> it turns out Barbara's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. right. That's right. And then leaning on the everlasting arms, right? All right. Thank you so much. And here's Aaron. Hello, everyone. Hi. This poem was first shared with me on my last day of college this past May by a wonderful professor. And I think he shared it with us because, you know, the excitement and sometimes a little bit of fear that comes with postgraduate life and a new chapter. But I felt like it was also applicable for the time we're living in now where a lot of us don't exactly know what the future will hold. So this is called Blessing the Boats by Lucille Clifton. May the tide that is entering even now, the lip of our understanding carry you out beyond the face of fear. May you kiss the wind, then turn from it, certain that it will love your back. May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever. And may you, in your innocence, sail through this to that. Thank you. Um, are there any coal miners? <laughs> this is, this tune is called the, is called Coal Miners Reel. And I can't remember which one of us it was who came up with the interpretation that this is a song about the reality of coal miners, which is to say coal miners are real. It's coal mine. Well, anyway, <laughs> that had to be you, Andy. Yeah, it must. That must have been me, and it made about as much sense then as it makes now. How does it start? Okay. Why don't you pick it up? sort of a last minute decision and it's great to have the tambourine on the up tempo tune. So, uh, but this is 
this ain't one of those. So. But this is a tune that still has to do with lava. This, this, is, uh, this is actually the tune that she came down the aisle, Aww. accompanied by when we were married almost 24 years ago. And uh, uh, it's, an, it's another Turlock O'Carolyn tune called O'Carolyn's Draft. So this one's an ode to what? Not his quarrel with his landlady, but rather his beverage of choice, I guess. <laughs> just like O'Carolyn meant it to be. It was amazing to play that off-kilter harmonizing part on, on the harp when you're blind and hungry. And But he was just thinking of O'Carolyn's draft. Okay, so, okay, so now we're going to play another familiar uh, kind of churchy tune. And then uh, we're going to have Jeannie come join us with some spoken words.
I think this poem is a favorite of Brent and Mary Lewis, and maybe others of you love this too. This is a poem by Wendell Berry, written in 1968. It seems very fitting to the time we're in right now. The Peace of Wild Things. When despair grows in me, and I wake in the middle of the night at the least sound, in fear for what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I'm free. So beautiful. So we're now going to play a waltz called the Westphalia Waltz, which I first became familiar with when we first began playing as a band and we were preparing to play for a contradance. The Bethany Youth Group was having uh, a hosting over in the East Randolph Community Center. And uh, Dickie Drysdale came and joined us for a couple of tunes, played his fiddle, and suggested that we should learn this one, and we did this waltz at that event. So I never play this tune without thinking of Dippy. And uh, it's, a, it's a gift, really, that, that he, I think he gave it to me as a gift, because it, definitely his, his awareness of this tune and suggestion that we play it really has enriched my life, because I just love the tune. That having been said, I don't remember what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, now I remember what it sounds like. Some gift, right? <laughs> one, two, three, one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mom is getting up to play tambourine, not to, oh. not to read. <laughs> Don't sit down, I need you. Uh, okay, so this next tune is, uh, is one that we learned from Roger. Uh, I think he was attracted to it by its name, although its name is the Siege of Ennis, so I'm not quite sure why he would find that attractive. <laughs> so maybe he's feeling particularly beleaguered on this day. It's a four-part tune, and uh, we like to play all four parts when we remember what they all go like and we remember where we are and so on. With any luck, we'll play all four parts twice each, twice, so that's a total of 16 correct starting the next part. It sounds familiar. It sounds, yeah, it's, it does. Andy, tell the story about, tell the story about the, uh, the YouTube video I sent you. Oh, this video. Okay, so this is the video that Roger learned this from. What a great resource, YouTube, for learning music. And he came across this tune, and it's these two guys on Dun Angus, which is a, an island off the, um, off the west coast of Ireland, really close to the Cliffs of Moher, right? From Dun Angus, you can like look back at Ireland and see the Cliffs of Moher. Uh, and it's this old bearded tenor banjo player and uh, a really rough looking guitar player strumming along with him. They're, and, and it's cute because they, they put a lot of, they put a lot of uh, production value into this, making this video. It's actually a whole band recording that they're playing along with. I never even realized that until recently. I went back and looked at it. There's fiddle and penny whistle and so on on the recording. But, but the, what you see is this tenor banjo player just totally expressionless, just playing, ripping along on the tenor banjo. And this guitar player, again, just like chunking along on his guitar but they keep changing what setting they're in. So they're like right on the Irish Sea and then they're, they've got a white, you know, a, a thatched roof cottage behind them. They keep bouncing around from setting to setting. And if you, if you watch it long enough, you realize that the guitarist, well, he looks like he's like just woken up after a night of drinking and his guitar has like these two really long splits, like the whole length of the top. The thing's about to just fall apart. It's fascinating. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Is that what you wanted me to say? That's what I wanted. Okay. okay. <laughs> now we're going to play the tune. <laughs>
time ever there's a videotaped documentation of whether we actually pulled that off or not. So I'm going to watch that and find out whether we played every part or not. Uh, it's time for Margaret to come share a reading with us. Margaret Campbell. Hi, friends. There are only uh, two good things that I know of about the pandemic. Um, one is our cats love it, because we're home all the time. <laughs> and the second is that I get to worship with all of you at Bethany. I never heard of Zoom on the 1st of February. <laughs> and now it's the only way to go to church, right? <laughs> I um, woke up a few mornings ago and said, Margaret, have you learned anything in the last 77 years? And one of the things that I've learned, I don't know about you, if we ever have in-person coffee hour again, you can tell me, that my life has given me many more questions than it's ever given me answers. Um, so I'm going to read, I'm going to tell you two of my questions, and I'm going to read two poems. Because I don't have any wisdom, but I think the poems might help answer the questions. The first question is, how do we get along with each other? The country, as you may have noticed, seems to be having a little trouble with this at present. How do we get along with the one another? The answer that uh, I will read you is a poem by Edwin Markham, and it was written in 1933, and it is entitled Outwitted. He drew a circle that shut me out, heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. And the second uh, question is actually one that Jeannie posed at the first time we had a Zoom meeting of, what's our committee called? The Visioning Committee. Uh, and Jeannie's question, and it's everyone's question, is where do you find hope in these days? Um, and I'm going to read you not the whole poem, but the first section of it. It is entitled, God Knows. And it was written by Minnie Haskins. And it was written in 1908. And the very first section of the poem, which is the one I'm going to read you, was read by King George VI as part of his Christmas message in 1939. And I thought I was going to have to explain who King George VI was. And then I kind of looked around and said, eh, I think everybody knows who. So this is the first part of the poem, God Knows. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. And he led me towards the hills and the breaking of day in the lone east. So that's, I don't have any answer to where do you find hope, but that's a poem I've always loved. Thank you.
Okay. So we're about to, we're winding down. Thank you. I think it's probably appropriate to acknowledge my gratitude to all of you for being here. To Brent and Roger for joining in this production and to all those who have read. And just I have um, immense gratitude for being, continuing to feel connected to this community and part of this community and hope, just hopeful for and joyful about uh, what we've been able to maintain through these challenging times and what lies ahead for us. And uh, just broadly speaking, I think that there's, there's, uh, there's so much goodness in this moment. So I'm just really grateful. So we're going to play uh, Angel Band, and then Kim's going to come share some words with us, and then we've got one more to send you off with. What key do we play? others how to combat fires 
and Ricky Kenyon, who is otherwise occupied in another project this afternoon. So thanks to all of you for uh, the beginning of what's going to be a great, great adventure. And thanks to all of you. It does our hearts good to see each other's faces, or part of each other's faces. <laughs> I'm deeply um, delighted to see you and look forward to the time when we can be together again. Thank you all for coming.